A few miles south of Tucson, Arizona, stands the mission of San Xavier, one of the oldest and most interesting missions in the United States. According to a provincial law, only completed missions were obliged to pay taxes, and many believe the wise old padres who built this one purposely omitted the completion of the dome on the right tower so as to avoid paying a tax to the greedy crown of Spain. The Padres had much to do with influencing the whole scheme of architecture in southern Arizona, and this modern hotel in the city of Tucson is an excellent example of traditional Spanish colonial construction. A drastic departure from the Spanish influence, however, is the state capital at Phoenix, on the grounds of which stands an impressive monument erected to Frank Luke, Arizona's World War I aviator. This young hero was credited with 21 official victories in his 39 days of actual combat service. He was forced down and killed behind the German lines at the age of 21 years. In front of the county courthouse at Prescott is another monument to a courageous American, Captain William Bucky O'Neill, organizer of the Arizona unit of Theodore Roosevelt's Rough Riders. He was killed while leading his men in the famous charge of San Juan Hill. The toughest little town in the West is the title that was once given to this peaceful looking mining town, now known as Jerome, one of Arizona's largest copper mining camps. This unique little village hangs precariously on the side of Mingus Mountain in the Black Hills. Since 1925, when 250 pounds of dynamite were used for blasting in the mines, the entire town has moved about six inches a year Braces, beams, and concrete blocks are used to keep the buildings from tumbling into the valley a quarter of a mile below. Because of this unusual terrain, Jerome has no streetcars or buses. In the early days of its colorful history, Jerome lacked water, and upon at least three occasions, its citizens were driven from the town after fire had destroyed most of its frame houses along with its 14 saloons. Among those who profited from Jerome's scarcity of water was Pancho Villa, the Mexican revolutionist, who once had 200 burrows bringing water to the town. Geologically speaking, Arizona is a land of extremes and contrasts. In the central section, high mountains extend diagonally across the state, and many of these mountains are extinct volcanoes. The forces of nature have been at work for thousands of years, preparing the material and sculpturing the contour of this unique and picturesque land. We are now at Granite Dells, where the irresistible powers of erosion have carved fantastic designs among the graystone monoliths. In the northeastern part of Arizona, we visit the world-famous forest of stone trees, now known as the Petrified Forest National Monument. Over a million years ago, according to geologists, this region was a low, swampy valley in which grew a forest of pine trees. Heavy floods eventually buried this forest in a sea of water containing vast deposits of silica, which it is believed was responsible for changing the trees from wood to stone. After the flooded area subsided, some of the petrified trees were uncovered and although their original forms are preserved, they are in reality composed of solid rock. It is difficult to believe that this desolate region may have at one time resembled the green forest we drive through en route to Oak Creek Canyon in northern Arizona. This unique highway is noted for its spectacular and winding course through a region that abounds in prolific trout streams and picturesque settings. The cool quiet of Oak Creek itself offers ideal rest and relaxation for the vacationist, as well as inspiration for the artist and writer. 
It was at Oak Creek Lodge that Zane Gray wrote his famous book, The Call of the Canyon. Arizona is noted for its excellent highways, a delight to the thousands of motorists who have traveled over them, as we do now, en route to the interesting little town of Wickenburg, also a popular vacationist spot, specializing in dude ranches, rodeos, and popular legends, such as the one about the Hacienda Well. According to the legend, which has been blamed on the Indians, whoever drinks from the well will never tell the truth again. Nevertheless, this awful consequence doesn't seem to frighten the dude ranchers, who appear to take it all as a joke. The lure of this romantic little town attracts numerous couples, especially the elopers, who park before a very colorful sign which reads, Justice of the Peace, Marriage License is Issued, and the Knot Tied. No visit to Wickenburg is complete without at least a glimpse at its colorful rodeo. And now we witness one of the rodeo's attractions known as Roping the Calf. The purpose of this event is to see how long it takes a cowboy to rope a calf, tie him up, and then release him without injuring the calf. Although this looks like record-breaking speed to us, we are informed that it has been done so fast that the calf has been tied up and released before he knew he had stopped running. But that sounds like a yarn inspired by drinking Hacienda well water. It must be remembered that this is a dude ranch where the life of the cowboy is dramatized, and even the horses do things that are somewhat beyond their usual routine. And so life goes on out Wickenburg Way, while in the hills and valleys of Arizona, there resounds the song of the cowboy, which is a fitting conclusion to our roaming through Arizona. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam, where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word, and the skies are not cloudy. The deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard.